Louisiana. On, on football fun.
you think? You bet. Bane's chicken fingers are always fresh, never ever frozen. Really? Marinated for 24 hours, canned, better than breaded, and cooked to order. Man, that does sound good. You just really love cane. Doesn't ever. Raising Payne's chicken fingers. Hank, you sure are good at this. Hey, it's my dream job. Toyota Tacoma, Popo, Rugged, Reliable, and the best selling compact pickup truck in America. I'm a hard, hard working man. No wonder it's the best overall. I got it all on mine for a piece of the Bahamas land. Get 1000 cash back on a new OE Tacoma V6 or lease for $2.99 a month with $9.99 due signing. Get to your Toyota dealer now during Tacoma Closeout. Ricky Jean-Francois limped up the field during the last commercial break. Young man out of Miami, Florida, 6'3-inch junior. He intended on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Blake McAdams sitting on his own 12-yard line for Mississippi State. A punt. Brendan Holiday standing on his own 13 for LSU. A high spiraling kick. Holiday all the way back to 25. Should sure hit anybody. It may have. It's loose. Back at the 21-yard line. Here to hit Mississippi State's Bowser, Tay Bowser. And that's why the flag was thrown on the field. <laughs> the ball obviously hit Tay Bowser first, which gave LSU no chance to field that punt. Here they just wave this flag off. When you don't give the opportunity to the returner to catch the football, it's kick interference. You can see right there that Tay Bowser gave him and Holloway no opportunity to catch that punt. LSU was down from their own 39-yard line. Let's talk about this quarterback, Jet Je Lee. Last week, had a rough first half, 0 for 5, including an interception that went the other way for a touchdown against Auburn. Came back in the second half, rallied them late in the game to victory. And because of the concussion suffered by Andrew Hatch, he got most of the snaps this week and made his first start tonight. Handed off to Holiday. Holiday is going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 38. There's a flag down on the field again. We're going to get a hold on Sharon Black, number 70, the left offensive tackle. The runner was ruled down, therefore we do not have a hold for fouling. <laughs> Just to clear it up, at 11 a.m. Eastern, Chris Berman hosts NFL Sunday Countdown. Presented by IBM, Boomers joined by Mike Ditka, Tom Jackson, Steve Young, Chris Carter, and Keyshawn Johnson. This week, they break down the battle in the NFC East between the Redskins and Cowboys at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Chris Berman and John Saunders delivered the day's highlights and scores during Sports Center. And Jared Lee from Brenneman, Texas. Uh, you know what Brenham, Texas is famous for now. I, I know you owe the... asked him yesterday, uh -huh. Jared Lee. I just want to see if you're paying attention. I, 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 I think it has something to do with food. Blue which is Bell ice cream. That's the, only reason, Texas. that's the only reason I remember it, Bob Davey. Timeout called. And both teams now, well, one with one, one with two timeouts remaining. The Ravens take on the Steelers at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. September is all about saving at the Shop Till You Drive clearance event at your Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep dealers. We're taking up to 40% off MSRP on 08 Rams to make room for new arrivals. Get up to 28% off MSRP on Grand Cherokee. Or get up to 24% off MSRP on Town & Country. Check out our great selection of fuel-efficient vehicles and find your perfect fit at the Shop Till You Drive clearance event going on through September 30th. I don't know, maybe you should...
should have been the blonde. Maybe you should just listen to the game. Maybe if you shaved your legs like me, the sneak in would have worked. Maybe if you hadn't lost our season tickets in a lawsuit because you got cheapo insurance, we'd be inside the stadium watching the game dressed like men. Huh? I, I don't want to get into this she said, she said thing. Getting cut rate insurance to save a little money could end up costing a lot. Call an Allstate agent today for a free Good Hands coverage checkup. Are you in good hands? Michelin makes some of the most fuel-efficient tires on the road so you can take the pump down. Find out how much you can save at michelinman.com. Michelin, a better way forward. One more time. I was eating, and then I reached into my pocket and found all this extra money. Reverse pickpocketed. Yeah. Description? Uh, tall, lots of bling. Got a reverse That's it. Right there? It's down right there, yeah. Sure. That's it. Hey, excuse me. You stop. Hands on your crown. Easy. Hey, hey, hey. Gamble a little bit. They 
Irving threw a halfback option for a touchdown last week against Auburn. And Jordan Jefferson, the freshman quarterback in the game. He took the look from Jefferson, rolls out, keeps it himself, and doesn't make it into the end zone. Stopped up just short. Cortez McCraney and Bo Walters leading the way for the Bulldogs. Fourth and goal coming up. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt he's going to go for it right here. And I believe he was down. Again, he's carrying the football in the wrong arm. He tries to switch it at the last second. His knee was down. Yeah. And the ball never crossed the plane of that goal line. Right there, the knee's down. Good call. And Jarrett Lee comes back into the ball game for LSU at quarterback on fourth down and goal. The Tigers one of two on fourth down so far this year. This play being reviewed. That play will not be overturned. His knee was down. But how about Les Miles? You talk about a riverboat yeah. gambler. This is a guy that played for Bo Schembechler in Michigan now. I mean, it doesn't come by him naturally. But last week against Auburn, onside kick in the third quarter, 14 to 10. Halfback pass. Then he goes for it. He's obviously down right there. Yeah. That knee's down. Then he throws the football with a minute and 18 left in the game. Well within field goal range, too. A field goal wins the game. But Les Miles, a year ago now, against Florida, 5 for 5 on fourth down conversions. Wow. Against Auburn a year ago, he throws the touchdown pass with one second left to beat Auburn when a field goal would have won it. Les Miles, uh... Here's the call. Well, our official's microphone not working, but obviously it's going to stay fourth down and goal to go for LSU. They do not overturn the decision on the field, and Les Miles telling us something about the special nature of the culture down here at LSU. It breeds a lot of passion and intensity reflected in the players on the field. You have to think right here that... Herman Johnson, number 79, and Sharon Black, number 70. That left side of the offensive line with the big power back, Charles Scott, going right behind that left side. They run the ISO. Touchdown, LSU. Kind of 
treasonous because Snoop is a noted SUSC fan. You know, he hangs out on the side. I guess he just goes with the national champs. Yeah, that's way. not hard. He'll, he'll be down seeing Urban Meyer next. <laughs> you know, it's Florida, LSU, USC, right? I mean, in, doing the tour. Yeah. <laughs> down in 10 for Mississippi State. Robert Elliott in a tailback. See what the Bulldogs can do here. Tyson Lee making his first career start. Hands it off to Elliott. Wendy Nix, have you ever met Snoop Dogg? What's going on back there? Mark, not nearly as much fun as Snoop Dogg, especially for the Georgia Bulldogs. Take a look. First of all, John Parker Wilson. The true freshman Julio Jones, the 35-yard connection. Alabama already leading by 10. Take a look, though. Glenn Coffey punches it in from three yards out. Bama all over Georgia, 17 to nothing, and we're still early in the second quarter. Wow, a bit of a stunner so far. Alexander, meanwhile, for LSU. Shaken up on that last play. Yeah, both starting defensive tackles now. Jean-Francois and Charles Alexander. You know, last year, Charles Alexander had a knee in the third game, had an ACL. Let's take a look inside. 91. Yeah, got rolled up on the left knee. Yeah, Miles was uh, saying a little bit earlier this week when asked about Alexander that he has the ability and potential to be one of the most dominant defensive linemen in the country this year right now on the sideline. Second down and nine. He picks up five on the play. It's been a week of soul-searching and introspection for Mississippi State, as I said. Dixon, the starting tailback, but Elliott moving up to the number two slot, Bob, replacing Christian Ducree, who was the former back. Everybody anxious to see Robert Elliott, a big-time recruit out of the state of Mississippi, plays with a lot of emotion, showed that emotion against Georgia Tech, just trying to get some playmakers out there. I mean, this offense has just been anemic. Third down and four coming up. First in motion. Lee had it batted at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. That's the second tipped ball at the line of scrimmage. This one tipped by Pittman. And it's fourth and four coming up for Mississippi State. They'll have to punt. Well, Tyson Lee down on the field before the game standing next to him. He may be five foot ten. So there's a reason they've had those balls deflected tonight. But, I mean, this MSU offense at some point has to give the Mississippi State defense a chance. I mean, you just cannot keep turning the football back over to LSU. Second consecutive three and out for the Bulldogs. Adams punts, Trendon Holiday. You get the feeling it's a little bit of an adventure for Trendon Holiday still. That time it appeared somebody bumped into him. A 43-yard punt, nothing on the return. They call it Death Valley for a reason. An intimidating crowd. We'll be back right after this. September is all about saving at the Shop Till You Drive clearance event at your Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep dealers. We're taking up to 40% off MSRP on 08 Rams to make room for new arrivals. Get up to 28% off MSRP on Grand Cherokee. Or get up to 24% off MSRP on Town & Country. Check out our great selection of fuel-efficient vehicles and find your perfect fit at the Shop Till You Drive clearance event going on through September 30th.
Stadium. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Charles Scott of LSU. Three consecutive 100-plus yard rushing games. Who's the last Tiger player with four? I got an idea. I'm not sure. Oh, that that you want want right, he wouldn't make I'm going to give a guess. Harvey Williams. Hempstead, Texas. Hmm. Same high school as Terrence Tolliver, number 80. He's a burner. War number 22 here, didn't he? There's Holiday. Speaking of burners, Trendon Holiday with the first down out to midfield. Mention the fact that he ran a 10.02 in the 100 meters this summer at the Olympic trials. He picks up 17. Boy, great block by Joseph Barksdale, the right offensive tackle. What's 78 right there? Engulfed Tim Bailey. And Trendon Holiday at 5 foot 5. Don't call him a track guy either, Bob. They insist <laughs> exactly. that he's a tough, hard nosed football player. A lot of choices if you're Gary Croton, the <laughs> offensive coordinator. I mean, a lot of different playmakers. Here's one of the choices Charles Scott breaks another tackle. Charles Scott. And down to the 47 yard line. The thing about Charles Scott, he always falls forward.
field position. The Mississippi State offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. That five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Yeah, we'll get a chance to look at this. You have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. If you count them right there, there's only six. <laughs> wow. Sylvester Froom talked about the fact that in that one... Well, they only had ten guys on the field. Sylvester Groom talked about the fact that this year they didn't seem to have the same kind of focus and discipline that they did all of last year when they went to a bowl game for the first time since 2000. So many mistakes. First down and ten coming back the other way. Charles Scott hammering away between the tackles. Got about seven on first down. And I really thought, and they still may, I thought Mississippi State would really play well here tonight in Tiger State. You know, they're a struggling football team. Sometimes things are negative around campus. You get out of town in an environment like this, and it's us against the world. And you really focus, and you really concentrate, and sometimes you play your best football. On the handoff, it's Charles Scott, and back to revisit our Aflac trivia question. Scott running again. Talked about his three consecutive 100-yard games. Who was the last LSU player with four? Was it Judge Alex? No. Okay. Yeah, Charles oh. Alexander, 1978. I should have spit out the whole thing. That was so weak. <laughs> that was a weak effort right there. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. I, 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 was, I wasn't quite sure. It's the first there. time I've heard, ever heard you stutter in the press box right there. <laughs> <laughs>
blitz off the edge. Lee's going to take it himself. Has the first down and then some run out of bounds at the 10 and a half yard line by Danny McRae. But it's first down for Mississippi State with 3.10 to go in the first half. Well, obviously, plays are going to break down when LSU comes with the blitz. Tyson Lee now just put it away and run. <laughs> forget, forget about the pump fake when you're five yards past the line of scrimmage. But a great job, Mark, of just creating a play. And all of a sudden now, Mississippi State coming to life with some confidence. Dupree still in the ball game. The deep back out of the eye gets the carry. Christian Dupree, a Louisiana native, a homecoming of swords for him. He stopped up at about the six-yard line, picked up five on the play. And let's give Mississippi State's defense. Charlie Harbison, the defensive coordinator. I know they're on offense right now, but the only reason they're on offense because that defense forced turnovers on the last two series. The bees with a pick and a recovered fumble a few moments ago. Second down and goal.
two minutes to go now in the first half of play. Mississippi State last year won four conference game wins, eight and five overall, and included in those conference wins, a big one against their rival from Mississippi, but wins against Auburn and Alabama as well. Well, they won at Auburn. They won at Alabama last year. They also won at Ole Miss, I believe. So three big wins on the road. They're down in five, and that one might have been batted the line of scrimmage by the Bulldogs. Intended for Richard Murphy. It's fourth down and five for the Tigers. Well, our guy Tim Bailey comes up with a play right there. He spent 12 months in Iraq. That's a great story, isn't it? I mean, Tim Bailey, a senior in high school, two weeks before 9-11, signs up for the National Guard. He goes and spends 12 months in Iraq, then goes to Delta Junior College, now playing his heart off, hard out at Mississippi State. Boy, the summer of 04, 05 was the beginning of a 12-month stint in Iraq. Cadiz feels it on the run at the 23-yard line. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you very much. Coming up at the half, i got to tell you, there's a blackout in Athens, but the Bulldogs likely to revisit that practice after the first half we've seen so far. And Oregon State pulled off the big upset Thursday night. That trend would continue today. We'll examine which ranked teams went down. Plus, playoff baseball is upon us. A few pennant races coming down to Sunday. We'll have the updates. First, though, Mark, back to you. All right, Wendy. 115 to go, and Mississippi State, Bob, with all three of its timeouts remaining, so maybe enough time to get into at least field goal range. We'll see here. Tyson Lee hands it off to Dixon, plus one up the middle, out to the 36-yard line. Last week had a 71-yard run against Georgia Tech, being teased by his teammates the whole week because on that long run, he was caught from behind. I tell you what, <laughs> two defensive tackles out of this football game and Mississippi State all of a sudden the ability to take it right up the gut on this Tiger defense. Four minutes to go. Dixon again. Nicknamed Booby by his teammates as in Booby Miles from the movie Friday Night Lights. Now They've got three timeouts remaining, Bob. Why not use one here? Well, he's a little conservative, obviously, because they've turned the football over so much this year. But all of a sudden, with the confidence and momentum they have, I think you'll see a timeout after this play if they run the football. Hand it off again to Dixon, and Dixon gets about a yard timeouts. on the play. Timeouts. Call timeout. They may be just satisfied to get into the locker room down by seven points. And you wonder, I understand why Sly Kroom is doing this. But we talked about the confidence Les Miles shows in his players and how players respond to that. I'm not sure right there if Sly shouldn't have gone for it a little more. Let it go. They've got all the momentum in this game. Sometimes you develop that mindset, I guess, when you've been shell-shocked the way they have so far this season, coming in at one and three. But right now, it is very much a football game, down by just seven points at the break. It's 17 to 10 for LSU over Mississippi State. Let's join Wendy Nix and Jesse Palmer in our ESPN2 studios for the college football halftime report. Mark, thank you very much, and we have no choice but to get right to this because you really have to see it to believe it. Ugga, I am sorry. It is not going well, my friend. Number three, Georgia hosting Bama, no score. Mark Ingram up the middle, scores the touchdown. Alabama came into the game the best rushing offense in the SEC, averaging 237 yards on the ground to get it done with Mark Ingram. Second and goal from the Georgia three, Glenn Coffey punches it in for the TD. Alabama up 17, and the crowd in Athens is stunned, and certainly with good reason. John Parker Wilson right here. So Julio Jones, the true freshman, makes the catch. And Alabama, this is just uh, almost unbelievable, 31 to nothing over Georgia. Now, again, this is a top 10 SEC showdown, and uh, it has not even been a contest, Jesse, so far. And I guess the, the best way to ask the question is, what in the world is happening? Well, Georgia
Georgia right now is having a lot of mishaps. You have to remember they came into this football game last in college football in terms of penalties. They were almost averaging 11 penalties a game. Penalties has killed this Georgia team so far in this first half. There was a costly fumble that Alabama was able to capitalize on. When you're watching this game, Alabama right now is dominating the line of scrimmage on offense and on defense. We just saw that highlight. John Parker Wilson able to take shots downfield, find his true freshman Julio Jones. Alabama just dominating this football game in all facets. You know, it's interesting because one of the big questions so far has been, even though we're in week five, is, is Bama back? Yeah. And I got to tell you, at this point, you start to think that, in fact, they are. Nick Saban's wow. got that team functioning on all cylinders. And the crowd in Athens, as you saw, just stunned. How about Tim Tebow, greeted by the fans? How would the Gators respond at home? Fourth quarter, Tebow right here drops back, feels the pressure, scrambles 21 yards down to the Ole Miss three. Two plays later, Tebow would punch it in for the TD, his second rushing TD of the day, tied it at 24. Jevin Steed, the play action to a wide open Shea Hodge. Ole Miss takes the lead. Shea Hodge only had three catches on the day, but he went for 133 yards in this touchdown. The Florida defense at times today got gashed by big plays like that. Still in the fourth, same score. Florida trying to tie it up. Tebow and Percy Harvin run the receiver option. Harvin takes the pitch, takes it in for the score. What a difference a healthy Percy Harvin makes. 82 yards and a touchdown on the ground for him today. All right, Florida would, tr would tie it up. And are you kidding me? The block extra point, and just like that, Ole Miss pulls off the upset, stuffed 31 to 30. The number four Gators fall to Ole Miss. Urban Meyer wondering what in the world happened over on the other sideline. They're pretty happy. You can see the numbers right there for Jevin Sneed. Tennessee and Auburn, number 15, survives on a day of upsets, but it is close. The Tigers, 14 to 12 winners over Tennessee. They have now lost twice, of course. The Volunteers coming off a tough loss to Florida last week. Meanwhile, Big Ten openers for Michigan and Ohio State. The Blue with an incredible upset. Beanie Wells is back. Both of these games important. We'll take a look coming up. The first great movie of the fall has arrived. You afraid to die? I ain't afraid. Good, because you go first. Appaloosa is becoming a ghost town. I'm the new city marshal. Virgil Cole. We'll kill you and Hitch. We'll try. You're not sure we can beat him. They ain't gonna run me off. Appaloosa. Rated R. Now playing in selected cities everywhere October 3rd. Illinois from the 
Stephen Threat is not built to run the spread offense, but he led his team in rushing today with 89 yards. They would score 27 unanswered points, complete the comeback 27-25. Beanie Wells returning for Ohio State as they take on Minnesota. Second quarter, 13-3. Buckeyes. Wells takes the inside handoff, jumps, and he's on his way. 108 <laughs> yards for Beanie Wells. That ankle not looking so bad right there, is it? No, I love this. The athletic leap over the gopher defender. A good defender. Sort of looks like Sean Marino last week. Later in the drive, Terrell Fryer to Brian Rubisky, an eight-yard touchdown strike. 20-3, to Ohio State at the half, and we move to the third quarter. Ohio State up 20-6, to play action. Fryer takes it in himself. A Terrell Fryer, 105 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Another beautiful performance for the freshman quarterback. 34-21, the final in this one. Northwestern over Iowa. Don't look now, Jesse, but Northwestern doing just fine. DJ Bichet having a great year so far. You see the numbers, 284 through the air, three touchdowns. And how about the offensive shootout, Michigan State, Indiana? It absolutely was. And this one actually, you know, went back and forth all afternoon. was a little bit closer for quite a while, but in the end, Michigan State pulling it out, 42-29. They beat Notre Dame last week. The Spartans uh, on a roll. You can see the numbers for Javon Ringer uh, for the Spartans. Oklahoma, now could they step up and be the number one team in the country? Somebody's got to. Everybody else coming up short. Sam Bradford has just been outstanding. Demanuel Johnson, and look at there, that's how they do it. Just Sam Bradford coming into the game was completing 79% of his passes. This offense is averaging 55 points a game. That's best in college football. And certainly showed no signs of slowing down. This one is at the half, 28-3. to in Texas over Arkansas oh. almost looks like a misprint. i got to tell you, look at the numbers for Colt McCoy and Texas. 52 to 10. That is the final, Jesse. More touchdown passes than incompletions. Three PBs through the air. He also is now leading his team in rushing yards. How about that? that how about that? I'm not sure that needs to stay the same, but <laughs> something's working. Who am I to say? Notre Dame, 38 to 21, bouncing back from the loss last week. Jimmy Clausen cut his hair. I don't know. Maybe is that is that the thing that got the job done? It's <laughs> getting it going. He looked very good. Charlie Weiss in this football game was just dialing it up. Everything that they were running offensively was working. East Carolina going down. I tell you what. Wow. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the in-conference play. East Carolina, of course, the early story in the start of the season, the first two or three weeks, knocking off the ranked teams. They've now fallen two weeks in a row, and this one, uh, really no doubt about it, 41-24. to 24. Maryland and UNC, the ACC, you know, it, it, it's a lot of questions. This conference still trying to sort itself out. Who's going to be on top? Well, we got to step closer today. Ryan Erlacher challenged thee to an honor duel. A what? An honor duel. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, Brian Erlacher. Can I start using swagger for most spice? Who's laughing now? <laughs> me. Introducing Taco Bell's new 89 cent volcano taco. With spicy lava sauce, it could be the spiciest taco ever. Wait, my volcano taco. <laughs> Don't look at me. Why pay more for heat when you can think outside the bun? Michelin makes some of the most fuel efficient tires on the road, so you can take the pump down. Find out how much you can save at Michelinman.com. Michelin, a better way forward. Premature. Hello, boys. Welcome to Holland. They say you've got a big plan to win the war. They say you'll take the Germans by surprise. So relax and enjoy the music. Because it's the last you'll ever hear. Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway. Available now. In the SEC, we proudly stand by our numbers. During the 2007-2008 academic year, SEC teams captured five national championships, while eight student-athletes were honored as the best in their sport. It was a banner year in the classroom as well, as nearly 50% of our student-athletes were named to the SEC academic honor roll. Whatever the arena, our numbers proudly tell the story of the Southeastern Conference. The SEC, our future is now. Monday, heated rivals collide for control of the AFC North as Ray Lewis and the punishing Ravens D take on Big Ben and the Steelers. ESPN Monday Night Football, Ravens Steelers at 8.30. We move on to the ACC Maryland at Clemson. First quarter, the Tigers up three. C.J. Spiller rushes up the middle, bounces outside in the way he can so effectively, 35 yards, he's on his way. Clemson 
could not be stopped during the football in the first half. They had 195 rushing yards in that first period. Well, the other member of that dynamic backfield, James Davis, the handoff up the middle, and he is off for a 38-yard touchdown. Yeah, if C.J. Spiller is the lightning, then that guy's the thunder. Buck 26 for him on the ground. A little bit scary right here for the Tigers, though. Spiller rushes left, has nowhere to go, gets tackled for a loss. He would need to be helped off the field with an apparent leg injury, but the good news, he comes back. Fourth quarter, same score. First, Maryland first and goal, and they pull off the upset. 20-17. to 17. It was that kind of day. Miami quarterback Robert Marv taking on North Carolina. Miami up 7-0. Benjamin Fields the kick. Now watch as Chavez Grant throws a huge block. Oh, there it is. Melvin Williams to spring Benjamin for the nice return. It takes everybody. And uh, take another look. Miami, no doubt about it, Jesse, playing physical There's from the There's another decleter right there. There were two decleters on that kick return. Unbelievable. Final minute of the fourth quarter, Cameron Sexton, Brooks Foster for the TD. And, you know, a lot of people thought without TJ Yates, UNC did not have a chance. But Sexton, great day, 242 and two touchdowns in the air. I think you said that as a matter of fact. Last chance for Miami, Robert Marv tipped and intercepted. UNC hangs on for the win, 28 to 24. Bobby Bout coaching his 500th game against Colorado. You know what? That deserves a big congratulations. I don't care who you are. All right, Colorado's down by a touchdown. The punt blocked by Dakota Watson for a safety. FSU with the 16-7 lead. Fourth quarter, now 25-14. Garvin, the block, beats the kicker, and he is off to the races. Michael Ray Garvin producing a spark for Florida State on special teams. Colorado really was running a high after upsetting West Virginia a few weeks back, but Florida State too much today. 39-21. How about this, ladies and gentlemen? Navy with the big win. I tell you what, you want an upset? Here's an upset. 24-17. Riley away. Skinner from Wake Forest. Four interceptions. Uncharacteristic performance from him, and Navy was able to capitalize. Must be a full moon. It was just that kind of afternoon. Plenty of baseball to be played. The playoffs are on the way. Ozzie Guillen's going. What about the Twins and the Mets? We'll sort it out. Coming up after this.
Well, our Monday night tour brings the bus to the city where the bus used to call home, Pittsburgh. There's no Jerome Bettis. The offensive face of this team is now obviously the last couple of years Ben Roethlisberger. And that face was in the ground a lot. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. He was sacked eight times by the Eagles last week. Yeah, the Eagles did a great job of getting after Ben Roethlisberger and their protection schemes. The Baltimore Ravens will do the same thing. They have outstanding defenders in Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. And, of course, Rex Ryan, the defensive coordinator for the Ravens, loves to get after the quarterback. And talking to Ben Roethlisberger, he thought against the Eagles that the Eagle defenders were falling out of the sky. Well, against the Ravens, they probably will be falling out of the sky. Well, Ravens are supposed to fall from the sky, but as tough as it might be on Roethlisberger, think what it'll be like for Joe Flacco, rookie quarterback for Baltimore, his first start on the road. Mike Tomlin told us, we've got to make that the story, that he's a rookie quarterback. Can't let him just hand the ball off and have nothing to do with the game. So he's got to watch out, too. And to me, the story is that end of September, Baltimore's in first place in the AFC North against Pittsburgh. See you Monday night. Thank you, gentlemen. We will see you Monday night. The Phillies have clinched the National League East, but still the wild card to be answered. Mets and Brewers are tied. Here's the score. 4-2 and 8-2 Indians over White Sox. But we've got a second half to be played. We're going to get you back to Baton Rouge right after this. This is the internet chick? She wants me to meet her tonight. Pack up. Ain't it cool news called Sex Drive, a fantastic original comedy. She's probably a guy. It's unpredictable. Out of this world funny. He met this chick on the internet. Internet? Computers that are connected. Computers? Seth Green and James Marsden are priceless. What? Yeah, really. It's super better than any comedy this year. You stole a car. Woo! Got arrested. You're a new man. Sex Drive. Rated R. In theaters October 17th. Where can you find me? At the intersection of my new life and my new lifestyle. Drive. Wheatgrass? Yeah, that was it. Change of scenery? A State Farm agent will be there to help you get the right coverage at a great price. You know that place where there's never a rain delay? I am so there. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What's this? It's wheatgrass. So what do you think of my screenplay? Everyone thinks Californians are so laid back. Woo! But we're actually pretty ambitious. We reach for the sky! Woo we put our best foot forward! We're persistent. Really persistent! We give it our best shot. So, if you have a dream of reaching the summit... Chase it down in California! But don't worry! They'll always be wrong with the top. California. Find yourself here. ESPN Tailgate Week, presented by Kingsford. Back at Tiger Stadium under the lights, this SEC clash between LSU and Mississippi State. The Tigers leading the Bulldogs 17 to 10 as we get ready for the start of the second half. Third quarter beginning as LSU, who won the toss, deferred to the second half. They will receive. Last time Mississippi State won here in Baton Rouge was all the way back in 1991. LSU has won eight straight overall against the Bulldogs. This kick a short one, kicking once again away from Trenton Holiday. This is Keelan Williams to the 42-yard line. Bob, things started off very well for the LSU Tigers offensively on their first three series, though, but in the second quarter, they really stalled. What do you see that happened there? Well, it shows you how turnovers take the emotion away from a football team in LSU's case. I mean, they're up 17-3, about ready to blow Mississippi State out of here, but they turned the ball over on back-to-back -back possessions. And then how encouraging that was and how it helped Mississippi State emotionally. So, turnover the key to a football game. Jared Lee right there at quarterback making his first career start in place of Andrew Hatch. Hatch has not played in this ball game. This is Charles Scott. Ran very well in the first half of play. Gets out to the 49. Picked up seven on the play. Scott, this week's SEC Player of the Week. And just to chronicle that story again for you, Andrew Hatch was shaken up in the second half of the game last week that LSU played against Auburn. He practiced a little bit. There he is on the sidelines on Monday. Didn't see much action or take many throws on Tuesday or Wednesday and did a little bit of work on Thursday. The feeling is that he will not play in this game tonight. Scott certainly is and will. Another first down for Charles Scott as they gash Mississippi State up front to pick up 20.
20. That's going to get an excellent block by Lyle. Hit 65 right there. And boy, when you're losing confidence, struggling a little bit on offense, it's great to have a guy like Charles Scott. And even better, though, to have a big offensive line to just settle your team down and come out and run the ball here in the second half. Yeah, huge weight discrepancy, as we noted earlier, between the offensive line of LSU and the defensive front of Mississippi State. First down and 10 from the 32-yard line. Oh, the 31, actually. Scott again. Still on his feet, Charles Scott. Great straight arm on Pegues. Quinn Johnson leading the way once again. Talked about the fact that he admired Walter Payton. That was a Payton signature stiff arm. Well, they come back with really the same play again. And watch here at the end how Charles Scott sticks his hand up in the face of Derek Pegues. You're allowed to do that on offense as long as you don't grab the de defensive player's face mask. Boy, that's finishing the run right there. All of 233 pounds. But you see how when you get off rhythm, what a luxury it is for Les Miles to come back and just hand that football to number 32. Give it to him again, Charles Scott. This time wrapped up. The D's got there, as did Keith Fitzhugh, the starting strong safety. But Scott, even at that, picking up three yards on the play. Well, the same play, three plays in a row right there for LSU. Charles Scott, 132 yards last week in that win against Auburn. Les Miles, his head coach, says his mental approach and awareness has improved from a season ago. That allowed him to beat out Keelan Williams for the starting job. He already has more yards this year than he's had any season in his career. Though, Second and seven, Lee. Wide open, but dropped by the fullback, Quinn Johnson. That had six written all over it had he hung on to it. Instead, it sets up a third down and seven. Great opportunity. They ran the power three times in a row, then run the power pass. The fullback, Quinn Johnson, wide open in the flat right there. Third down and seven coming up. Scott on this drive, the tailback with four rushes and 50 yards. See what they do here. Scott, the lone back in the backfield. Three timeouts, they don't use their timeout. 
their team goes in a little down because their coach maybe didn't show a lot of confidence. LSU comes out in the second half and takes it right down the field. An impressive opening drive in the third quarter to start the period, and Los Angeles, LSU's lead now up to 24 to 10. Back with more after this.
Eccles and Dixon got about two on that play. I thought it was interesting what Sly Chrome told us before the Auburn game when we talked about offensive philosophies and we talked about all the spread offenses in the country. I'll never forget him saying, I will retire before I go to the spread offense. You know, he believes in the power game, the two-back offense, the play action. You know, he spent 17 years, I believe, in the NFL. And he really believes in that scheme. What would Bill Bryant think about it? That, that's sacrilege. The second and eight. Good for Bear Bryant back in college. And Alabama downfield and incomplete. A little bit of contact down the far side of the field. But good pressure up front on Lee by Tyson Jackson. Jackson has been in Lee's grill all night long. Well, Tyson Jackson with 14 career sacks. Watch him, the left defensive end. He's going to do a little swim move over the top on the offensive tackle. Wow. <laughs> he shouldered Tyson Lee. Third down and eight coming up as a result.
Charles Scott and the Tiger offense eating up a lot of yardage against Mississippi State. A little movement on the offensive line of the Tigers. Lyle hit up front. Dead ball, ball start, 65 offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Can you see in this state, you know, I, I coached two years at Tulane back in the early 80s. It's a unique culture and a lot of passion. And these players take great pride playing for the state of Louisiana. I mean, it's different. And because of that, it's unique. And there's a there's a special kind of pride here. And great energy on a Saturday night. They've won 27 consecutive Saturday night games. Right here. That pass complete to the tight end, Richard Dixon. Tumbles forward about two yards short of the first down. Picked up 12 on the play out to the 40-yard line. You know, the fullback, Quinn Johnson's had a tough night. I want you to watch him block right here. You know, he fumbled one time. Boom. I mean, they put him on the defensive end. That's an excellent block right there. Nothing sexy about it, but still a very effective, huh? Approaching nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. Jared Lee has gone the distance at quarterback. Andrew Hatch, shaken up last week, suffering a concussion against Auburn, has not appeared in the game yet tonight. With Charles Scott That's took a lick. I think he delivered a lick. <laughs> we talked about what a unique setting this is here at Death Valley Tiger Stadium. Bob and I had a chance to walk with the team on Victory Hill prior to the game. You look at their record here. This is a tough place for road teams to come in and play. 31 of the last 33 games here at home. That crowd starts getting tired, though. I mean, they wear down. I mean, they start this process early in the morning. Yeah, two days before the game in the morning. <laughs> First and 10, lead a pass again. Complete to LaBelle. And LaBelle has another LSU first down. He was working against Jasper O'Quinn. Picked up 11 on the play. Well, this LSU team, all the ingredients to repeat as national champions. I really believe that. They are so balanced on offense with the strong running game, the depth at running back, the receivers. The key to me is Jarrett Lee. But you see he has the ability. To pick up that conversation right now. And speaking of Jarrett Lee, hey, Andrew Hatch gets hurt, out with a concussion, Bob. The adage is that you don't lose your starting spot. Here's the call. Long start, 78. Offense, five yard penalty, remains first half. Do you supplant Hatch at starting quarterback with Jared Lee, even though it's an injury that caused him to miss? Well, just talking to Les Miles yesterday, he's not going to say it. Mm. You know, he's not going to make a bunch of firm rules like, well, you never lose your starting position because of injuries. He's not going to back himself in a corner. He's going to evaluate it week to week. But based on the second half against Auburn and tonight, I think Jared Lee's the guy. Out of the eye, here's Charles Scott. You know, for Big Fella, very nimble on his feet. And back to Lee real quick. 13 of 19 passing tonight for 186 yards. One touchdown and one interception. He is the son of Stephen Lee. Stephen, a former college football player. So. Three younger sisters. His dad is the quarterback coach at the high school. They're playing tonight. So he has to TiVo the game. Got it going. A little bit of the pistol formation right here, made famous by Nevada. And they just shifted out of the pistol to the offset. Second down and ten. LaBelle got a nice block out in front from number two, Demetrius Bird. Marcus Washington, meanwhile, making the stop on the six-yard gain. And the beauty of this LSU job, as Les Miles told us yesterday, you just recruit the I-10 corridor from Houston all the way to Texas. I thought you were going to say the beauty no, of the job. excuse me, from Houston all the way to Florida. I thought you were going to say the beauty of the job is the compensation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about the facilities? Oh. There are some great facilities here. LaBell six catches now for 87 yards. Third down and three on the quick slam. Bird with the catch. Demetrius Bird with a first down at the 27-yard line. He picks up 11. Speaking of facilities, got brand new 
football facilities, which opened up a few years ago, and now under construction, a brand new baseball stadium. Well, you met Paul Maneri before the game. Paul coached at Notre Dame uh, when I was at Notre Dame. Uh, they honored the baseball team here in, this, in the second quarter of this game. But, yeah, I mean, great facilities really in all sports. They won five College World Series titles. Charles Scott put his hat down and gained a couple of hard yards. And took a hit from LaMarcus Williams. The SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Courtesy of his 132 yards last week against Auburn.
46-yard line. And uh, let's take a look at the AutoZone playbook. Well, I think it all starts with the physical nature of Charles Scott. I mean, LSU, a lot of different choices on who to give the football to. But it all starts with Charles Scott because he makes the pile go backwards. A physical football player. Four straight 100-yard games. I mean, nothing real flashy, just dependable. And that coupled with the efficiency of you that LSU offensive line has been lethal for the Tigers. Bulldogs with the ball. Decree with the carry. Flag down on the play. He's out to the 27. Prior to the snap, full start. You know something. 55 offense, five-yard penalty. The thing, first down. the thing I like about LSU's offense and Charles Scott and that offensive line, when things start getting a little hairy, like they were at the end of the first half, they can go in at halftime, settle down, and come out and say, look, we know there's something we can do. We know we can line up and run the football with Charles Scott and settle our team down. You know, there's not many teams in the country now with all these spread offenses that have that luxury. That's a great ace in the hole with a very low risk factor. Debris on the draw, that's his pet play, his favorite play. Got about five on it. Christian Decree. And you know, Mississippi State, you know, we, as we mentioned, Mark, we did the game against Auburn a couple weeks ago. At that time, they really, really thought they had their quarterback for the future in Wesley Carroll. You know, I think Tyson Lee's come in. I think he's done a nice job creating maybe a couple plays with nothing there. But now they've got themselves in a little bit of a quarterback rotation situation almost. Maddox says that if you have two quarterbacks, you really don't have any. Lee fires complete out to the 30-yard line, short of the first down to Decree, who came out of the backfield that time, was met immediately by Perry Riley. There's Wesley Carroll watching this one from the sidelines, the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Played for George Smith, one of the top coaches in South Florida. Yeah, he's just a young guy. I mean, he's a sophomore that played last year as a freshman, and, you know, he'll get another opportunity. He has to stay positive, and when he gets another chance, be better than he was. Third down and six for Mississippi State. McCray in motion. Lee. Oh, man. Robinson stayed on his feet to make the catch and held on to the ball as well. Yeah, Delman Robertson, Robinson, a true freshman, explosive guy, another potential weapon for this Mississippi State team. I mean, Tyson Lee stays in that pocket. Great throw. Oh, look at the lick right there by Curtis Taylor, the big free safety. Oh. Now, the purists will say, Bob, that he didn't wrap him up. He went for the kill well, shot. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. I've been hanging around you and film room too much, man. <laughs> That's how Chris Spielman popped out. <laughs> On the handoff. That's Decree getting a lot of action here since the second quarter. Under three minutes to go. A two-yard rush by Decree. A Louisiana native, a homecoming of sorts for him tonight. So far, though, the Bulldogs down by 17 points. You know, we haven't talked much about LSU defense, really, but, you know, Bo Pelini leaving, taking a head coaching job at Nebraska. Really only five starters back on this defense and going with co-coordinators this year. The system is working. Out of the backfield, Dupree doing a nice job on his touches, making the most of his opportunities. Riley brings him down, but... Decree picked up 13 on that catch and gets another Mississippi State first down. You know, we talked about the co-coordinators. Doug Mallory up in the press box right there with his hat on backwards calls the defenses. And then Bradley Dale Pivido is on the sidelines. But, you know, not much has changed schematically. But one problem, LSU last week gave up five big passes up at Auburn. Robinson in motion. Out of the eye, that's Dixon, who's back in the ball game, got about three on the play. Under two minutes to go now in the third quarter. You know what? We, we may have gotten Doug Mallory in a little bit of trouble. How so? you know, well, his dad, Bill Mallory, long-time coach, pretty conservative guy. I don't think he wore his hat backwards when he coached. <laughs> He's an old-school guy. Yeah, old-school, yeah. His dad uh, keeps busy watching college football games, even today, and uh, is on the Masters Coaches Poll Committee. He has two other sons. One's at Illinois as the co-coordinator. Another one coaches for the New Orleans Saints down the road here. On second and nine, play fake by Lee. Backside pressure. And wisely throws it away. Robinson in the vicinity. But backside pressure applied by 
by Kirsten Pittman. Third and nine coming up. Meanwhile, just to tie up an injury report, Ricky Jean-Francois, who left in the first half, we're now told that he suffered a strained groin. Not sure whether he will come back or not tonight. You have to think this is four down territory right here for Mississippi State. Two downs to make really eight yards. Well, two of eight on third downs tonight. what 26 yard line McCray made the catch and they're spotting it about a foot shy of the first down really so fourth good down job. coming up excuse me Mark yeah really a good job by Brandon McCray of just finding an opening right there watch him come on the crossing route all the way across the field they take it away two guys on him but then he kind of just sits down right there Tyson Lee is able to find it defense giving up 21 points last week against Auburn giving up 10 so far this week against Mississippi State with under a minute to go here in the third quarter well we talked about the Auburn the LSU defense last week up at Auburn against that spread five big passes for 58 38 29 29 and 23 most of it against man-to-man -man coverage because Auburn was in some formations that forced them to play man-to-man -man. but I think if you can protect if you can block their front I do think you can throw the ball a little bit on LSU there's uh, one of three passes that have been tipped at the line of scrimmage by the front four of LSU and some heavy pressure in one of their sacks I mean what happens if you can't run the ball and you have to throw it it's tough to protect that front, and they just all of make so many guys in there. Bulldog going for it on fourth down. They're three of nine on fourth down this season. I'm surprised that Anthony Dixon isn't in this game. Decree gets the handoff, and he's going to get the first down. Christian Decree moves the chains for Mississippi State. Good drive right here from Mississippi State. Well, you talk about Doug Mallory, the defensive coordinator. Bob, one of his concerns was Mississippi State's ability to be physical in their own right and yeah. pound away. Great point. Because they played really three spread offenses this season. Appalachian, North Texas, and Auburn. This is the first power offense they've played. Tenth play of the Bulldog drive coming up. Snap, Dupree takes it, got about two down to the 21-yard line. I kind of wonder where Anthony Dixon is in this second half. I mean, I love the way he ran with tenacity yeah. at the end of the first half. There he is on the sidelines. His nickname is Booby, as in Booby Miles from the movie Friday Night Lights. And remember what Booby used to say to Coach on the sidelines. He said, Coach, if you want to win, let Booby spin. Well, Booby's on the <laughs> sidelines watching us. That's the end of the third quarter. Back in this. a lot of movies in your day, haven't you? <laughs> the chase for the Sprint Cup continues at Kansas tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ABC.
UN hits, you'll try. They ain't gonna run me off. Appaloosa. Rated R. Now playing in selected cities everywhere October 3rd.
game touchdown of the season, the 26th of his career. That was really a good drive by Mississippi State. Culminating in a touchdown, trying to cut the lead to just 10 points now. A little over 10 minutes to go. Mississippi State trying to snap that eight-game losing streak against LSU. Oh. Old offensive lineman looking at that right there. Kind of routine. Not much emotion right there. What's on your mind? Well, there's an epidemic sweeping our nation. Really? Women everywhere are having babies just to get the new Volkswagen Rutan. Take this couple. Christine here is so seduced by German engineering, she's having a baby just to get it. That's not why we're having a baby. With a strange man she barely knows. I'm her husband. Don't be like Christine. Have a baby for love, not for German engineering. Wait, we're standing right here. Learn what I'm doing to help at rutanboom.org. They should have seen this coming. The kids have been wanting to go to the safari theme park since last summer. <laughs> so we used our city cash returns card to buy the tickets and stuff. So cool. It was great to get close to the animals. But not that close. Oh. Luckily, we used the cash we got back oh. to help pay for some body work. With your city cash returns card, earn unlimited cash back and get it mailed to you automatically. Whatever your story is, your city cash returns card can help you write it. Because city never sleeps. Some people go through life following plan A. It's predictable, expected. But my plan is to do more. To work on my terms. To open up new perspectives. To find a competitive advantage. Welcome to plan B from Brother. Our inkjet all-in-ones make your biggest ideas look even bigger. It's the smarter way to work in color. My plan is to write my success story every single day. Make the smarter choice. Plan B from Brother. You know, scientific tests have proven that when you drink Dr. Pepper slowly, the 23 flavors taste even better. Hey, I get it, because half my life's been in slow motion. Watch this. Mississippi State and LSU on ESPN2 is also available in high definition on ESPN2 HD. Dixon with a touchdown a few moments ago for Mississippi State, narrowing the gap to 10 points now. LSU has won 15 of the last 16 against the Bulldogs, and the Bulldogs just trying to get things back on track right now, coming into this game at 1-3 and, and coming off a disheartening loss last week against Georgia Tech. But that drive right there was a very impressive one. It was just straight-ahead football, Bob. And an excellent job of throwing the ball to the running backs on some little play-action type passes. Carlson with the kickoff.
and down of the field. Bowman a couple of weeks ago was the SEC defensive lineman of the week. Been playing some good football for Sylvester Krull. It's good to see him up. You know, Sly Croom paid him kind of a, a compliment only coaches and players in the inner circle would appreciate and understand. But he said, he told Jesse, he said, you're the best bad body player <laughs> I've ever seen. I mean, that's a compliment. I know some, to some people that might be offensive. But. It's about the results, not how you always look at your gym shorts. Murphy on the carry, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Flag down on the play as well. That was Carlin Brown in on the stop for Mississippi State. This is kind of the little lull that LSU went through at the end of the first half when Mississippi State had some momentum. 52, Carlin Brown. There's a look at. Uh, he looks Jesse pretty Bowman. good in that uniform to me. Yeah. I mean, he's about 6'1, 3'10. Those guys are hard to block now. I mean, those guys that are kind of built low to the ground. What's that say? Fitness management. 305 pounds. You know, I'll never forget. What's fitness management? Does that mean, like, take care of your body? Seriously. Yards from the previous spot remains first half. Have you heard of that, Major? Never. Never. <laughs> but like you said, the best body, best bad body player this group has ever seen. And red zone alert up top. Uh, Georgia trying to make a comeback against Alabama. The second and ten on the Georgia 20, though, for Alabama. Sudden now. Remember early in the second quarter, LSU converted on second and 30 and eventually scored a touchdown. Williams going back. Little contact on the sidelines. No flag thrown. Chris Mitchell was the intended receiver being covered by Bowser. And it's second and 25. Well, Bowser took a shot and knocked Chris Mitchell down, but it was prior to the football being in the air. But pretty close. But all of a sudden here, Mark, this football game has been a little bit of a lull, but it's only a 10-point game. LSU all of a sudden a little anemic themselves right here. Got a little bit flat here. On second and 25. by Derek McGee's. He picked up about 12 on the play. Something else impressive about these skill players for LSU. You know, Brandon LaFell, number one receiver on the team. He's also on the punt team. He's a gunner on the punt team. Charles Scott, the number one tailback, is their best kickoff coverage guy. So I think that's a great message for the young players on the LSU team. Your two star players are physical guys that are on special teams. And LaFell uh, with some big catches tonight. Seven receptions for a total of 100 yards. And Mississippi State's coming after him right here. On third and 13, Lee throws it up. And it's incomplete, intended once again for Mitchell. Good coverage by Marcus Washington, and it's fourth down. The Tigers will have to punt it, and Ellis, MSU, Mississippi State, uh, maybe sensing a, little, a second opportunity here. I agree. Then all of a sudden, this punt right here with Derek Pegues back as the punt returner, the left-footed punter. Dalfrey uh, wearing number 38 this week. Last week, wore number 30, which was a double number. Well, last week, he had six punts, averaged 48.3 a punt. This is just his second. Lefty with a high spiral. McGee's driven all the way back to his nine-yard line. He gets a chance to return it. McGee's going to be dragged down to the 16-yard line. The Bulldogs 84 yards away after that 52-yard punt. And a seven-yard return. Back right up to this. ESPN360.com, your online home for live college football. These are the Rutan babies, born not for love, but desire. For German engineering in a minivan, the all-new Volkswagen Rutan. And with advances in fertility drugs, cyber adoption, even reverse vasectomies. More and more people are having babies simply for the love of German engineering. I didn't reverse anything.
me, LL Cool J, before I started using Swagger from Old Spice. While you were busy living your life, did lines and wrinkles creep in or your eyelids begin to sag, leaving you looking tired? The remedy is easier than you think. Laser Skin Resurfacing is a single procedure that erases lines and wrinkles and restores more youthful skin. Laser Eyelid Surgery corrects heavy eyelids and unflattering bags and leaves you looking refreshed. Haven't you waited long enough? Take the first step. Call the Williamson Cosmetic Center, 927-7546. The Williamson Cosmetic Center, redefining natural beauty. Get together with Evolvo during the model year-end event at Duplessis with three great ways to save. Get 0% financing on a 2008 Volvo S80 or top safety pick 2008 XC90. Or lease for only $4.99 per month. Or buy and drive with the Duplessis price. With three great ways to save, life is definitely better lived together in a Volvo from Duplessis. Duplessis Volvo, Louisiana's premier Volvo dealer.
continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ABC. This man brought his wife here today for an intervention because he knows she wants to birth children simply for German engineering. What? No, no, we just came here to look at the roof on. It's because he cares. He cares about the fact that each day in this country another 10,000 babies are born just for German engineering. But you just made that up right now. What are you talking about? Oh, it's okay. What's your name? Becky? Please, don't be like Becky. I'll take that new egg white flatbread sandwich, please. Excuse me, ma'am. I was wondering... Sorry. Introducing the egg white flatbread sandwich from the new DD Smart menu. With under 300 calories... Go deep! ...and a delicious turkey sausage or veggie, it may just be the smartest choice you make all day. I'm on 10. America runs on Duncan. Water damage guaranteed.
and straight fly Gillette Fusion is better than Mach 3. Okay, five chairs, five Fusion blades. They're spaced closer together to reduce pressure with more comfort. Mach 3 only has three blades. See? Not nearly as comfortable. Back to five, meathead. No, I need them. For what? Switch to Gillette's most comfortable shave. Fusion power. Gillette, the best a man can get. Taxi! Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles with two different gels for softness and support are outrageously comfortable. I'd rather walk anyway. Are you gelling? Dr. Scholl's. Demetrius Bird with a touchdown catch a few moments ago. Young man from Miami, Florida, and Miami Central High School. The same school that produced the likes of Willis McGahee and Najee Davenport. A couple of guys in the NFL right now. Signed with Florida International out of high school. And interesting in the respect that he didn't start playing high school football, Bob, until his junior year. McGee's on the kickoff return for Mississippi State. McGee's out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. First down and 10, that's where they'll start. And I know it's discouraging for Mississippi State. I mean, they had an opportunity on the prior series, third and five, chance with a big play to Christian Ducree. He dropped the football. Then they come back and give up the home run to D Demetrius Bird. But there are some positives in this game right now for Mississippi State. I mean, they're starting to show some life on offense. It looks like the quarterback... Tyson Lee gives them a chance. Still a good part of their schedule to be played. Anthony Dixon in a tailback, first down and 10. Wide throw on the field. Lee made a nice spin move to get away. And tip throws out of bounds at about the 41, 42-yard line. But this is going to be a hole that's going to come back. Yeah, Anthony Strotter, the left offensive guard was beaten and grabbed the defensive lineman from LSU. Topsy-turvy day in the SEC. Florida losing today at home against Ole Miss. That's LSU's next opponent after the bye week. They don't play until October the 11th, followed by South Carolina on the road as well. The good news is that LSU gets Georgia and Alabama at home. Yeah, I mean, they're on the road after the open date, two straight weeks at Florida, at South Carolina. You know, it's hard to look at a schedule and project a whole lot now. I mean, nobody thought Oregon State projected much on that USC schedule, nor did Ole Miss on Florida, so. First and 20, Lee completed the 26-yard line with number 87, Aubrey Bell, with the catch. Going back to that upset today down in Gainesville when Mississippi State went in there and one by a single point on, I might add, a blocked extra point. It's downstairs in the hotel lobby watching that. You should have heard the roar that went out hey, amongst the LSU I'll tell you fans. what. How about the roar Thursday night at the hotel oh, yeah. when USC threw the interception, when Mark Sanchez threw the interception? I mean, there was a roar in the hotel Thursday night. <laughs> Lee tried to find Brandon McRae, but it's incomplete. Sets up a third down and long, 13 to go. The only thing... LSU obviously talented enough. If I had one concern, it would be coverage in the secondary. You know, they replaced both corners. They have two big physical safeties, but those safeties got locked up last week in some man-to-man -man coverage and got beat. If you can protect, I think you can throw the football on LSU. But you better get them early because that secondary is going to be more experienced later in the season. And uh, when you look at the bye week coming up next week for LSU before that Florida matchup, then uh, preparation becomes that much better perhaps for their secondary to pass complete to number 89, Jamel Smith, got in behind Hawkins. Going back a couple of years, Florida and LSU have had some good battles. LSU lost in Gainesville a couple of years ago, 23-10. Then last year, LSU won last year's matchup. A key win on their way to the BCS title, a 28-24 victory. Yeah, Les Miles went for it five times. Number 54, 15 yards. pickup on this play. I don't know about that. He was just straggling the line. He wasn't really out of bounds. Jacob Katera.
Tim talked about the safeties in the secondary a little bit. Second down, six, and Tyson Lee is going to talk things over with his coaching staff. They have one timeout remaining. They called it the Gold Knight. Everybody clad in gold. Fans outside of Tiger Stadium. They figure this one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced with 2.46 to go in the fourth quarter. What a scene, though. Huh? Unbelievable. Baton Rouge, Louisiana on a Saturday night. Like the only it. other place that I've coached at that challenged this as far as just overall noise was at Tennessee. A night game at Tennessee. The same kind of environment. I really enjoyed, partner, uh, taking that walk with you with the Tiger team before the game down to Victory Hill on the way to Tiger Stadium. You ate that up, didn't you? He almost wanted to break into a little trot. Yeah. You know? Those microphones, though, kind of got in the way. Second down and six coming up for the Bulldogs. Some life. Some life for Mississippi State tonight, though, particularly on offense. The gray in motion. Wide open in the flat. Cut. And Dupree atones for that earlier drop to get into the end zone. Again, Woody McCorvey. An excellent job of game planning and calling plays. Chris Hawkins had a chance to tackle him out there at the goal line, but again, the running back in the passing game, he's exposed something right here against LSU. Hey, Bob, what does that do, meanwhile, for Decree's confidence? I mean, is that just a little consolation? Does it help? I mean, well, it proves he's a strong-willed kid. You know, his dad played running back at Tulane. He started out at Tulane. You know this is a huge game for him, personally. Just great to see him bounce back. That's his first touchdown reception of the season and of his career. That narrows the gap to just 10 points with 2.40 to go. And when you look, Bob Davey, back at some of the turning points of this game, we kind of point back to the end of the first half when Mississippi State had a little offensive success, got the ball back with a little over a minute to go in the first half and elected to just play it conservatively and get into the locker room. Well, I don't know in the big picture that it would have made a difference in the outcome of this game, but I think at some point, I mean, the byproduct of what Les Miles does, taking what some people would term chances with players, but letting them play, showing confidence in them, I mean, you've got a bunch of guys around the country want to come to LSU because of that. On the flip side, Sly Kroon played it very conservative in the first half. It was a bit of a downer for his team, but... One concern I have just spinning forward right here with LSU. I worry about their secondary. I worry about their pass coverage. What do, you, what do you think some of the opponents watching this game, potential opponents of LSU, have learned about their potential weaknesses? You mentioned the safeties already. Yeah. Well, and I don't, I'm not putting it all on the safeties. Right. I mean, I think Woody McCorvey, Mississippi State's offensive coordinator, has done a good job schematically of getting the running backs on the linebackers. Right. I just think you can throw the football right now. You look back at Auburn last week. You look at Mississippi State tonight. As we see the onside kick right here. And the Bulldogs recover the loose ball after the onside kick. Brandon McRae right there, number six, recovers it. But there's a flag on the play, so hold on. Yeah, it looks like it has to be an offsides on... McCray 
had it at first. Watch the kick. Great kick. That's McCray. Now he knocks it out. Boy. Brandon LaFell, starting wide receiver, regrets the loose ball. Yeah, we talked earlier about these starters on special teams. We have another flag on the play. Well, they picked the flag up. Now they're saying there's no penalty. 2.37 to go here at Tiger Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. LSU. LSU will be awarded the ball at that spot. However, after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number one against LSU, a 15-yard penalty it will be first down. Oh, there was a penalty. Okay. Folks, at 11 a.m. Eastern, Chris Berman hosts NFL Sunday. Countdown presented by IBM. Boomer joined by analysts Mike Ditka, Tom Jackson, Steve Young, Chris Carter, and Keyshawn Johnson at 7 p.m. Eastern. Chris and John Saunders deliver today's highlights and scores during Sports Center. They're going to move this ball up all the way down to the 35 yard Touching was the initial call. Cray touched it before it went 10 yards, and then you had the unsportsmanlike on LaFell. I think you're going to see Charles Scott a little bit here finish this out for LSU. Goes down 10 from midfield.
tune into ESPN News. Coming up next, O'Reilly NHRA Mid-South Nationals qualifying. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob Davey, I'm Mark Jones. For our entire crew, we're going to say laissez les bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll from Baton Rouge. So long, everybody. This telecast is available on ESPN2 HD. The Mississippi and Memphis, Tennessee, where two streets give this city its life. Beale Street and some of the best blues music anywhere. And Nitro Alley. Just think how much horsepower waits down that road. And today, it's the O'Reilly Mid-South Nationals. With four races to go in the season, they're trading spaces in Funny Car every round. The top five are separated by only four rounds of racing. And Tim Wilkerson goes from first to fifth to first. A single car operation against the mega team. Tracking Tim is Dave Reed. Embarrassed, Paul. That's how Tim Wilkerson described the weekend following his team's first round loss at the first race of the countdown to the championship in Charlotte. Redeemed was the feeling last week following this team's romp through the Dallas field that saw Tim win a series-high fifth win of the season, a victory that also allowed him to retake the countdown points lead. Now the feeling resurrected. The attitude has definitely changed in the Levi Ray and Shout camp. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Tim and this team is now point-hungry and has it set on mean. His previous bets points finished prior to this year's seventh. Now he's four races away from becoming a potential champion. Here's Funny Car Highlights. Neither one of these two are yet in the field. Gary Dentram and Jim Head, they are both well outside the 12. Dentram at 19, Head 20th overall. Dentram, he is 7 in the points, 142 out of first. And Jim Head, of course, is not part of that fight. Here is the weather as the sun begins to go down. Friday evening is the time to do it. Here's why. 77 degrees, very dry air means you make a lot of horsepower. 93 degree track temperature and that density altitude when you correct for barometric pressure and temperature. Cars think they run about 1,900 feet above sea level and that is good, good air. It's a down of 413, 291 miles an hour, and that takes him from out of the field, not only into it, but to the top of it. He's now number one. From the basement to the penthouse. How about that? Obviously, the conditions are very good. Watch the right side of your screen. Jim had the car launched straight towards the center, got out of the groove. That didn't help him when he tried to apply the clutch. It smoked the tires, but Gary Denson makes a very nice pass to get that number one spot. for you as we look at the Pedragon brothers coming to the line. Take a look at Tim Wilkerson taking over that point lead with his win in Dallas last week. Picked up four positions. The one that got the biggest loss was Cruz Pedragon. He lost four positions. But he got bumped out of that top spot with that first round loss. And that was the largest drop in points in the pro classes at Dallas. Tony Pedregon, he's second, as you saw, and just 11 points back from Tim Wilkerson. Both these guys have been number one qualifiers this year. Wow, both had problems. 13th, 16th, remembering that after the first two sessions, they reset and take only the top 12 going Tried to get recover. At that point, he knew that run was done. Tim Wilkerson on your left there. From fifth in the points to number one with that win at Dallas. His lead is 11 points over Tony Pedregon. Last leading five wins this season at DNQ here last year. In the other lane, it's Gary Selzy.
far, Mike Neff still has that number one spot with a 4-11 elapsed time. And look there on the starting line. That's country recording artist Krista Marie, and she'll join our musical lineup next season. Got some good stuff for you. Did she get that cool jacket? Yeah. I want one like that. Think a nitro oh, a little that's there? a fire suit. Uh, just so long as I wore one, I forgot what they look like. That is nice. She looks better in it than me, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, that does yeah, hurt. Yeah, we love it, too. Nothing like the smell of nitro in the evening. Smells like... Gary Tolliver and Ashley Forrest. Now, Ashley, sixth in the points, but only 93 back of Tim Wilkerson. Was 49 points out, though, going into Dallas.
Well, she looks like she's got a great car this weekend, and Paul looks like she may have a lot of fun, too. Well, and John, when the Nitro cars come to the line again, you can bet we'll be watching Tony Pendergon. Second in the points, but not yet qualified in.